Hello everyone, this is Pontus from Flash Record Java and uh, this is episode 2 of our elephant engine. Uh, in this episode we're gonna make some more setting up. Uh, maybe start making game loops. Uh, it depends on how fast we get things going. Uh, first of all, as we ended up last episode uh, we get our frame uh, a white frame very fun with a title and or specified width and height this frame has some problems though uh, one if we close it uh, you're gonna see it's not closed we can terminate it here, it's not closed, it's still running and this is because of something I forgot but something we will do today so basically we haven't yet told the frame what to do when we close it because we can do multiple stuff uh, set if I f remember what it is default close operation and then it's like G frame dot yeah we can exit on close we can dispose on close which is basically what it just did it just disposes it just disappears the frame but the or uh, game will still run uh, this is good for for example utility programs or if you have like an extra frame that pops up with like utilities uh, that's good like this kind of shit if you make a new thing here that's basically a utility if we close that you don't want the whole eclipse to close you just want it, that window to dispose uh, hide I don't really know what the difference is but yeah Iconified, I think that's also one. Or like, uh, yeah, I don't know which one. I just know this is exit on close. Uh, that's how we're gonna do it now. I think we're gonna change this later. But now, if we run this and close it you're gonna see it's terminated which is good because we don't want our game running in the background of our computer playing sounds and taking up usage when we don't actually play it okay so that's that uh, this game engine is gonna be a single threaded game engine uh, you can make multi-thread but it's I don't know, it's it's just more it's easier to make it one thread. Really. Uh, so yeah, first off, we wanna remove this. We don't wanna set visible. This might seem a bit odd because now we won't have a window anymore. Uh, and we, we terminate. But that uh is because we want a public uh, void start method. This is gonna set it to visible. And this is because we might not wanna set it to visible the first thing we do. Uh, because uh, Java, as you should know, is a line based uh, language, so it will go this line then this and then this so if we would have it here we would always call it the first thing we do when we start our game and what that would do is it will set the frame visible before our game has loaded because all of our game loading will happen after this and our thread will also be started after uh, so I had that mistake in my engine and what it resulted in, in some cases you would get a blank screen and then the game would pop up and 
most of the time that's just like a flash but still you don't want it to flash if you can disable it and that's what we have done so now we just do start and we will still have our nice window uh, so for the threads we gonna make it pretty simple so uh, in here we wanna make a new package we wanna call this util no actually don't we don't let's just create a class called time uh, this class is gonna be full static it's gonna have a static uh, long I think which is gonna be second it's gonna be I think no wait it was a nanosecond so there we go this is a second in milliseconds yeah uh, so in here we're gonna have a public okay actually let's make this engine multi-threaded <laughs> yeah let's do that static thread update thread and public static thread render thread so okay let me explain about threads because if you know Java but you don't know much about games this is something that might be new and especially multi-threading when because yeah we return again to Java is a line based language and only executes one line at a time so if we uh, if this is our program and we start up here they made paint so like I don't know what they did but it like it's really laggy even though I'm not when I'm not recording and shit it's still like they made it laggy I don't know why it's actually terrible I can't use paint when I'm recording <laughs> okay oh no that's not what I want to do at all okay so let's say this is our start okay and then we go down and we uh, create a character okay we create our player and then we go in and we want to update player so if we would have one thread this is how it would work um, even though these would be in different methods and so on this is how it would work we would update and then if you would use one thread you would have to separate it so it would only update like 60 times per second but the rendering would be how many times the computer can and this is because you don't want your player to move faster if the computer is faster but you want it to render as fast as you can so if we limit the update to 60 per second if we set our player uh, to move one pixel per update it will always move with a constant rate instead of if you'd have a beast computer the play would just s like fly over the screen and if your computer would be crappy as hell it would like be really slow that would make multiplayer games really unfair if you did the math on the client side uh, and stuff like that yeah you, you just don't want that so this will be limited uh, this will not get called every time uh, ev it runs every loop uh, it would then render the player and it would yeah that's it this is if we would have a player or image we should probably like load image and then okay so this is or outside the loop and this is inside or I should say yeah game loop now here comes a problem because if we in our update 
has I I recently made a game called uh, Apocalypse, which is a balloon popping game. Uh, this game generates balloons and you pop them. And uh, I'm using my engine, so it's multi-threaded. So it wasn't a problem really. It didn't fr conflict that way. But this is still like what happened was, for example, in the updating. So let's just remove. So in the update, we updated the background to move. And when a balloon spawned, what we had was a for loop that looped through and basically loaded a bunch of stuff and did a lot of stuff for every new balloon. And what did this made a pause in the game, basically it stopped. So you could notice the background and everything is freezed. And this was a huge problem. So what I did uh, after a lot of thinking was I created a new thread where I put all of the spawning for the balloons. This made it so the game continued update at the 60 per sec. I should probably like 60 UPS updates per second. And when we spawned a new balloon, and this continued because it's in another thread. What the computer does, it runs them simultaneously. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the maximum amount of threads. It depends on your CPU. But I mean, add another thread for spawning. It won't really affect the computer at all. Or yeah, if you at the limit. So anyway, that's how we solve that problem. And it's the same if you have uh... one thread i guess this video is more in depth about how game loops work so that's what i'm gonna call it uh, if you have one thread and you have a really heavy particle system in your render you would have a for loop that loops through all the particles and if you would have like a bunch of particles on the screen and you have one thread the the render will go to a certain point where it's so slow so the render starts slowing down the update what happens then is the game just slows down like even though the game looks laggy because the rendering is bad it also it actually is laggy if you have two threads and you get to that point where you have so much particles that the for loop is just yeah, your computer doesn't come along. Uh, what will happen? The game would look laggy, but it would not be laggy. Like input and everything would still get calculated, and everything would continue working, though it would look laggy because of the rendering being bad. And then you could go more advanced, and you could make so well if my particle number exceeds 1000 then put all of those particles in one thread and this is how you can make a really efficient game engine that supports a lot of textures and everything this is yeah that's kinda how you made it uh, my game engine has two threads uh, which in this case we it's a bit more efficient than what we're gonna make it because I've spent more time in it so uh, but still it's two threads and uh, for example my particle system it's yeah it's one thread one th rendering thread um, I might actually try to do something that I just said it's actually kinda smart I haven't thought of that before but yeah uh, that's 40 minutes talking about threads. Uh, so yeah, we won't. I won't really do anything else in this video. Uh, but we added this, and we added our threads up here. Uh, if we run our game, we won't notice anything, because we haven't really done anything noticeable. We also made this time class that we will use in the next episode. So. I hope you enjoyed this lesson about how threads work in games and 
uh, next time we're gonna actually create a thread or actually two and we're gonna run them and we're gonna display we're gonna make some experiments with them and I'll show what I'm talking about uh, hopefully you can like try to figure out new cool ways to use threads and uh, if you want if you come up with anything that you want me to put in the game just comment below uh, also if you ask anything other in general about my channel or other videos just comment below if you enjoyed the video like it and uh, subscribe for more tutorials bye